leaving Montreal. This is the departures lounge for US departures. The only flights leaving to the US are Delta and Air Canada. Let's see what's happening. I first have to go through security, then probably it'll take me through duty free. Then after that, I'll get to my gate. There's only like about four counters that are open. Well, it's a lot busier than last time. This is the U.S. departures area. I fly at a 74. I'm here in Birmingham, Alabama. I just arrived and passing through downtown and past the courthouse, all these famous buildings. I'm gonna go see the Vulcan Park, three miles down this way. Pretty straight shot. You just go down 20th Avenue and you'll get there after you go up the hill. So this is gonna be exciting. I'm gonna check it out. You can tell it's spring by the blossoms. This is one of the old hotels. I'm just about to leave downtown Birmingham. I'm just gonna walk across this bridge that overpasses the railroad tracks. And then from there, I'm gonna go up to Red Mountain. And right at the top is where the statue is. This is the hospital over here. They built a building right over the road. So they have a little tunnel that goes underneath it. I love the blossoms everywhere. Oh look, we got Macario's Kebab and Grill. Wonder what kind of genre restaurant that is. We don't know, it doesn't say. Oh, well, we're almost there. Red Mountain is just ahead of me right now. I'm currently at 850 feet elevation, so we're getting there. Making progress. It's a pretty nice walk. You get to see a lot of areas. There's uh, new condominiums for sale like this one. A lot of restaurants and the hospital of course here's hotel indigo another nice hotel to stay at homewood suites hilton this is the first time i've seen a waffle house in a historic building across the street they have the original pancake house also in a somewhat historical building across the street we got the highlands of united methodist church with a statue and fountain in the front wow this is pretty nice this is like one of those streets where you have many roads one two three four Five. So basically a five point intersection over here. They got Iron City Pizza Company, which Birmingham is considered the Iron City because of all the iron that they... I gotta go. That they make over here. That's one of the reasons Vulcan statue is here, made out of the original iron that's mined from this area. Here's a place called 3000 Bar. Of course it's daytime now, so no action there. Now I'm almost there. I just have to turn a little bit left here. Just follow 20th Street and it'll go way right up to the top to the park. Walking up this mountain, I see Abbey Road over here. It has pretty nice houses. They're building another one over here. Looks pretty quaint. Nice landscaping with the flowers. So let me give you some history of this statue. It's called the Vulcan statue. The pedestal itself is 126 feet high. And the statue itself weighs about 120,000 pounds. It's made from iron ore that was mined here in Birmingham, Alabama. This is a good vantage point, but I'm gonna go closer to the actual park. Here's the parking spot. And then there's a little pathway that goes around. And then I'm gonna go to as close as I can get up to the top and check it out. There's also a Vulcan Center, the visitor center. Now this is the proper entrance, the George Ward Park the Red Mountain Park and the Shades Creek Greenway. So if you like to exercise, you can come here, do your jogs, your walks, stop by this historical monument, which is overlooking the city of Birmingham, Alabama. Well, the reason this mountain's called Red Mountain is because it's composed of iron ore, also known as hematite, which was basically started about 420 million years ago. You can see how there's first limestone, then the red seam, which is hematite, and then this one is the Fort Payne shirt, which is 340 million years ago. And here's Vulcan Park at the very top. You got the Lone Pine Mine, number three, and the Vulcan Trail that goes around the mountain, or at least part of it. And there's the downtown area. They started the construction of the actual statue in 1903 and it was finished in 1904 in time for the World's Fair up in St. Louis, Missouri. And it was on display over there and it uh, got a lot of remarks. But on the way back, when they were shipping it back, 
they lost the spear. So the spear in his right hand is actually a replica. They had to recast it. And even after it came back from St. Louis to Birmingham, it didn't exactly come to this park. It actually went to the fairgrounds and it was on display for some time, but it got deteriorated and some parts were missing. But finally in 1938 is when they actually set it up over here. And they had to actually overhaul the whole statue in 1999 because it was getting so dilapidated. They had put concrete inside the statue. That was falling apart and so they had to redo the whole thing in 1999. So this park actually opened and it was revitalized in 2003, which is the 100 year anniversary of the statue of Vulcan. If you're wondering where the name Vulcan comes from, it was actually an old Roman god named Vulcan. Also, in 1949, this statue got two neighbors, which were the antennas from the two TV station, along with, of course, the cell phone tower further down. But these two right here are the TV tower antennas. You can see this from the air as you're flying into Birmingham quite easily. Of course, when it's brown grass, it's also easily noticeable from the air. Over here is the visitor center that you can take a look at. Apparently, they do have a elevator that goes up to the top. Now that's something that's new. They just started that and uh, made it kind of not visible from the Birmingham side. So if you wanted to go see the top, which is the new thing since 2003, you can do that. Of course, they wanted to charge and make some more profits from this statue that's that's why they did that of course it's pretty close hey how's it going all right is this elevator open to go see the top yes you have to have a ticket where can i get a ticket you get a ticket over there that's for this and the museum oh okay great so and you're the tour guide or no sir i didn't <laughs> collect the tickets me. yes sir okay great thanks So tickets are about $10 to go get it. You can go up to uh, the top observation deck as well as the museum, which is over here. Now this is a new thing from 2003, so just for the last 18 years. Well, I think tickets are about $10, but let's confirm that. Now this is the museum. It looks pretty nice. This part's the modern part. I stand corrected. It wasn't ten dollars. It was actually six dollars plus tax, which is six sixty for an adult. That includes the museum and the observation deck. So a pretty good deal. A little bit more history on that spear part. Since the spear was lost along the way from St. Louis back here, they actually used this statue as an advertisement aid and put all kinds of stuff in its hand, like Heinz products, Coca-Cola products, even a pickle as a way to advertise. Finally, they did reconstruct and recast that spear, which is the original item that he had in his hand. So it's back to square one and it's renovated. So it looks pretty nice, I'd say. This is a completely free park to visit if you want to. You can also come here, have a little picnic. They got tables everywhere, trash bins everywhere to keep everything clean. And there's benches over there. There's several parking lots that you can park at either down there where I came from or else in the back side of it. So a good location and pretty peaceful. So that completes my visitation of the Vulcan Park and Museum. 
It's the one place that Americans can visit since everyone's doing domestic tourism these days. It's relatively close to the downtown area, about three miles or about a one hour walk, which I did. And I'm just gonna now take a walk down these stairs. I don't think I'll go down on the nature walk that they have here, although it's an option if you want to do some more exercise. The Kiwanis Club was one of the helpers that helped establish this little park and renovation of the area. They have a little fountain here that's not in operation currently, but I'm sure in the summer it will be. And the gates lock up at 6 p.m. So that's what you need to know of this park. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna walk back to downtown. It is a pretty nice view. The elevation up here is about 1,100 feet, I'd say, according to my watch. 1,120 feet. This intersection is actually called Five Point South. It's a neighborhood developed in the 1880s as one of Birmingham's first streetcar suburbs. It was a town of Highlands from 1887 to 93, so about six years, when it became part of the Birmingham city. The rest is history. This is Five Points South. All these animals are in this water fountain. And of course, the amazing Methodist church is here. Looks quite impressive. I'm gonna go into Publix. Pretty good, how are you? One coupon. Okay. Six forty-six. Thank you. Alright, have a nice day.